Whoa, whoa. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh. Mm. Today we're going to do something about the intercooler that we installed about a month ago. We actually made a whole video about the intercooler and included performance results before and after the installation of the intercooler. Anyway, to date, that video got 70,000 views, but I suspect not everybody watched the whole video. So between the new viewers that are joining the channel and the folks that didn't watch the whole video on the intercooler installation and testing, well, I do get a lot of negative comments on the intercooler setup, and rightfully so because at first glance, the intercooler appears to be mounted in the worst location possible. Let's take a better look. Well, first of all, the intercooler is mounted directly on top of a hot engine. Yep, I get that. Oop, and over here we have a hot water neck and heater hoses directly under the intercooler. That can't be good. Yep, a lot of heat's being radiated directly under something that's supposed to be cooling the boosted air that the turbocharger is generating. Okay, while we're here, let's switch gears for a moment and take a quick look at the air intake. Now it's hard to see, but the air filter's in direct line for fresh air coming into the engine compartment from this big hole here. Actually, this big hole in the front of the car allows plenty of cool air into the engine compartment, and generally speaking, the engine compartment stays more or less at ambient temperatures. For the new viewers, and perhaps some of the folks who may have forgot, well, the stock Saturn radiator was replaced with a tiny radiator from a Honda Civic, and it's located on this side of the car, and the air filter is located on this side of the car. Eh, there seems to be plenty of fresh air that can get to the filter, so no worries there. Another thing to consider is this tiny 719cc diesel engine doesn't generate a lot of heat, and for most of the winter, we had to keep the radiator covered so the engine would stay at operating temperatures. Anyway, I think the air getting to the turbo is close enough to being a cold air intake as we can make it without actually sticking the air filter outside the car. So if we go back to Season 3, Episode 7, when we first installed and tested the intercooler, well, we discovered even though the intercooler wasn't in an ideal location, it still dropped the temperature of the air from 125 degrees Fahrenheit to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, 75 degrees is not too shabby, and anyone with experience with turbos and intercoolers would be more than happy with that number. So here's the bottom line, and I don't mean to be rude, but pay attention this time. When we tested the intercooler for performance gains, well, the short story is, there was absolutely no performance gains that we could measure from adding the intercooler to the induction system. So what that means is, the engine was perfectly happy and ran exactly the same if the boosted air temp was between 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 125 degrees Fahrenheit. So after learning this, we sort of put finishing the intercooler on the back burner until the weather warmed up here in Kansas, and today the temperature should be in the mid-80s, so it may be time to take another look at the intercooler. Now like it or not, the location of the intercooler provides the most direct path from the turbocharger to the intake manifold. We could have certainly put the intercooler behind the front bumper, like most normal people do, but remember, even though the front bumper is a better location, the intercooler doesn't seem to provide any performance gains on this 719cc diesel engine. So sometimes being lazy pays off, because this simple and cheap solution likely provides the same results as the more complex installation. Well, sort of. You see, now that the weather is getting warmer, our intercooler temps are starting to go up but they're still below 125 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you've been paying attention, our goal on this turbo diesel powered Saturn isn't necessarily to get the boost temps insanely low. Instead, our goal is to keep the temps below 125 degrees Fahrenheit. So in order to keep the intercooler temperatures within the specified range, well, we're gonna have to do some experiments and see what works best. Now, no doubt mounting the intercooler behind the front bumper is the obvious solution, and that's exactly what I would do if we were going to keep this car. But unfortunately, this car is going to the scrapyard before the end of the summer. Anyway, given that the car's days are numbered, we aren't going to go through the effort of custom building all the plumbing necessary to mount the intercooler in a different location, especially since the intercooler doesn't seem to offer any increase in performance. I think the first thing we need to do is raise the intercooler off the engine so it's not so close to the hot cooling lines. And to do that, I'll whip up some aluminum spacers on the lathe and we can fit the spacers between the engine mount brace and the intercooler bracket. Let's take a close look at these spacers before we install them on the car. 
This is one of the two spacers that will move the intercooler bracket as far from the engine as we could possibly go, and it goes here. Of course, the other one goes here. Now on the other side of the bracket, I made another spacer and it'll mount to the bracket via this hole here. Let's see how it fits the car. Fast forward and it's all reassembled. We had to extend the plumbing a bit due to the difference the spacers made, but overall this was a quick and easy modification. Now over on the other side, you can see where the third spacer fits. Once everything was bolted together, the whole assembly is very sturdy. Let's see how it looks with the hood closed. Well, the spacers definitely moved the intercooler up, and it'll be interesting to see if this makes a difference. Now here's my theory, and I could be way off the mark on this one. I'm speculating that the air flowing through the bumper will somehow exit the car after passing through the intercooler, and this will help keep everything cool. Now, <laughs> now the good news is we do have a plan B, and a plan C, and a plan D. So plan B is to force air down through the intercooler with this hood scoop. Now, this scoop is made from coroplast, and it's just something we fabricated for this experiment. If for some reason this turns out to be the best choice, then we may actually buy something that looks a bit better. But I gotta tell you, no matter what we put on this car, it's gonna look stupid. Anyway, after we test the Ram Air style scoop, we're gonna try plan C, and that's reversing the scoop, and we'll see if that makes a difference. Lastly, we're going to try plan D, and we're going to mount the hood scoop sideways. Why? Because my friend Eric said to try this. Now, I'm not sure what the deal is, because it seems like this won't work, and it may be that my buddy Eric is trying to get me to do something stupid on the internet. But you never know. At least I don't. Anyway, let's try plan A first, and see how well the intercooler works without a scoop. Alright, we're on a road just outside of town, and the plan is to accelerate the car up to speed and keep an eye on the intercooler temperatures. This number here is the current temperature of the air after the intercooler, and this number here is the ambient temperature outside the car. For the metric crowd, and everybody else, well, here's the deal. As we go down the road, this number should theoretically go down, and in a perfect world, it'll eventually be the same as this number. What are the chances of that? I don't know, but that's why we're testing stuff. And go! Okay, so that was the first test, and to save time we showed most of it in fast forward, and it's possible that some of you may not have seen this epic pass that we did, so I'll play it again. Yep, this three cylinder 719cc turbocharged intercooled diesel powered Saturn coupe actually passed another vehicle. Now, did we actually build the fastest Saturn in the world, or was that truck just going slow? Hmm, I'll let you decide. Anyway. The intercooler temperatures for the first test have been recorded. Let's try plan B and install the Ram air scoop. And some duct tape for aerodynamics. You guys ready? Well, let's get back to it. Same thing as before, we're trying to get this number to match this number. <laughs> and already I can see that the Ram air scoop is sort of working. Who would have thought? Let's see if a reverse hood scoop that's similar, but completely different than the cowl induction system that was used on the 69 Camaro or Chevelle. It would be cool if this works, <laughs> no pun intended. I reckon it's debatable, but this doesn't look as stupid as the Ram Air hood scoop.
All right, well, that didn't go so well, but we're learning stuff. At least I am. Now let's try plan D, the sideways scoop. So yeah, not only does this look stupid, I feel it's not going to work, but let's try it anyway. Well, I reckon plan D was a bust and it didn't work, but keep in mind the ambient temps were a little bit higher when we tested this idea. So clearly the Ram Air Scoop worked the best, but let's take a look at the results just to be sure. Yep, the Ram Air was definitely the best out of the four, but I'm not a big fan of the way the hood scoop looked. Now there is another option, and unfortunately the parts didn't arrive while we were making this video. Anyway, the last option that we'll eventually try is mounting fans directly under the intercooler to push or pull the air through, and perhaps that'll provide results that rival the Ram Air system. I'm sure the folks who analyze every second of this video will find faults with my methods and whatnot, but the most important thing to remember is, back in Season 3, Episode 7, we discovered the intercooler on this diesel engine doesn't seem to provide any measurable increase in performance, whether the temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 125 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's possible we don't even need an intercooler. Obviously, I'd be on board to exploit all the benefits of the intercooler if it made a big difference in performance, but in our case, we could put a huge hood scoop on the car, or no hood scoop, and the results would more or less be the same as far as performance goes. Anyway, hopefully when we install the electric fans under the intercooler, that'll keep the charge temps below 125 degrees Fahrenheit, and we won't have to install a hood scoop. Now, if nothing else, today we learned that this Saturn has enough grunt under the hood to actually pass another car, which is truly amazing in all regards. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.